Hi, Aten. Um, me again. So you'll probably be watching this on Friday. So you've made another week of this online learning thing. Um, it's got to be said, I'm finding this a little bit tricky now. As you can see by the picture, my youngest daughter, Daisy, is very intrigued on what I'm doing. And the amount of times I've had to stop midway because she comes and interrupts me. So um, there's a little picture there of Daisy interrupting me, trying to teach her and do this. It's a little bit challenging. Anyway, um, so we're carrying on with the case study on the Holderness Coast. I know it's going on quite a long time, but I think it's really important with this one that you properly understand it. Um, so the same learning objectives as yesterday and before half term, because there's quite big learning objectives. So they're to understand the causes of the erosion, which hopefully you do, to understand the impacts of the erosion, which hopefully you do from yesterday, and to understand the ways the coastline has been managed, which you do to some extent, but we're going to focus on that in this lesson. So drop everything and read. Um, again, this um, screenshot of the, of the textbook page is available if you want to, um, but I'm just going to read this to you. So I read some yesterday about hard engineering, um, so things like groins, sea walls and so on. Um, but this is more about the soft engineering techniques. So soft engineering techniques at Holderness. Beach nourishment at Hornsea. Beach nourishment has added sediment to the beach at Hornsea by dredging and pumping from offshore straight onto the beach. And in some parts of the world, sand is imported from more distant locations. The purpose of beach nourishment is to create a wider sandy beach to protect the cliff line, to add sediment to the coastal system so that areas down drift benefit. So when longshore drift picks up the sediment, it moves it further down. Its disadvantage is that much of the sand can be removed in a single storm and therefore the sediment has to be renewed every year or two. Um, there's been quite a lot of beach renourishment at Lyme Regis, which is a place local to us. And there's also some at Dawlish Warren, which is the place we normally do our field work to. Coastal zoning. OK, so this is more of an A-level concept. Um, but coastal zoning is also known as red lining and is a device used by planners to divide stretches of coast into land use zones. Red lining identifies those zones at risk of erosion where the costs of protection exceed, so therefore are greater than the benefits. When they're talking about costs, costs don't always have to be money related. So costs could be anything that's having a negative impact. OK, so when they say costs and benefits, it's easy to think that costs is just money. And obviously, a lot of the costs will be money, but sometimes it's um, there's other costs as well. Um, decisions are made not to protect the area and planning permission is refused for anything inside these zones. It is a way of reducing costs and targeting coastal management spending into areas where there is economic benefit. So, for example, in Sidmouth, obviously there's big economic benefit to protecting Sidmouth's main beach, but there's not such a big economic benefit of protecting Pennington Point. So you can relate this to your local area. In the Holderness Coast, along the Holderness Coast, places like Hornsea and Mappleton are relatively big economic areas. So they provide a lot of tourism, a lot of jobs, whereas places south of Mappleton, so places like Cowden and the farms that we've talked about, have a lower income, lower kind of economic status. So those places are left to erode. And that's something called managed retreat. So managed retreat works hand in hand with coastal zoning. Decisions are made by councils that the coast should be allowed to erode in some areas. Those zones at greatest risk of erosion are refused planning permission for new permanent buildings or other activities like caravan sites. And a policy is adopted whereby existing residents have to roll back away from the cliff. Existing local residents at risk can apply for planning permission to be allowed to move their homes or caravans inland. East Yorkshire Council now encourages people to relocate to one of the existing towns, especially Bridlington, Hornsea and Withensea. 
residents agree to demolish their existing home and build a new one in the location so that it, it's no larger than the original. In return, they receive help with the costs. Farm buildings and farmhouses can still be built in rural areas so long as the owners still use the buildings for farming and do not sell them for other purposes. So a lot of people in the Holderness Coast are basically getting funding to build houses in the towns. But of course, a lot of them won't like that because they want to live in the countryside. And um, But the government aren't going to provide money to protect those areas from erosion. So it's quite complicated, that bit. Um, if you don't understand all of that, don't worry, because that's really high level. But basically, those are like soft engineering um, or managed retreat, which are basically different techniques for coastal management. Okay, as promised, um, this is the answers to the task that you did yesterday, the peeing technique. So these are the answers. So you've um, got the points on the first column, the explanations in the, in the second column and the evidence or example in the third column. So, for example, exposed cliffs are eroding at a faster rate than anywhere in Europe. That's your point. This is because the boulder clay cliffs are less resistant to erosion and are undercut by waves at high tide. The cliffs then slip and slide and material is carried away by longshore drift. That's your explanation. The average rate is one to 10 metres a year, but in some areas, 20 metres have been lost. That's your evidence, which is numerical. So I'm not going to read through the whole thing, um, but you might want to screenshot it or something um, to check your answers. So I'll just leave that on the screen for a couple of seconds before I move on. Um, so this is your main task for today um, and you can do a bit of research on this. You can have a little look, look at some of these things, but attached to show my homework, you will have a copy of a table like the one that's shown on this slide. But there's extra columns on the table that I've added to show my homework. So what you've got is you've got a photograph of different types of sea defence, different types of management strategy. So you've got seawalls, groins, riprap and so on. It tells you a little bit about them in the second column. It tells you their lifespan, so approximately how many years they last before they need replacing and how much they cost on average per metre or per cubic metre. What I would like you to do is complete, ignore the fact it says about um, target grade C and B. I used this before the numerical grade system. So it, totally ignore that part of this slide. All I want you to do is um, print off the sheet or save it and complete the columns advantages, disadvantages and example. So I want you to really think about what are the advantages or the benefits of that particular sea defence. So for example, the seawall one advantage or one benefit would be that it's got a long lifespan of 100 years. So once it's built, it lasts for ages and, and it's really effective at stopping the sea from reaching the cliff. But a disadvantage or a cost might be that they look unattractive and some local residents wouldn't like the appearance. So they ruin the natural landscape. Also, they're very expensive. So they're one of the most expensive forms of coastal management. So what I want you to do is do that kind of process for each of those sea defences. And you could do a bit of research on that if you want to. So BBC Bite Size is quite good for that. Um, and then the final column is going back to all of the notes you've made, the videos you've watched, the discussions we've had. Try and think of an example of a place along the Holderness that has each of those different um, sea defences. So for example, the wooden groins at Hornsea, the rock groins at Mapleton and so on. Um, tetrapods, I don't think tetrapods are found anywhere along the Holderness coast, actually, but it might be something you could research because I'm not 100% sure. So that's what you need to do. Um, ignore the stuff in the green box completely. This is just a slide which just 
um, provides the definitions of hard engineering, soft engineering and managed retreat. And so some of you might want to copy those into your books. And that would be a good idea. This is not for you to do today. OK, this is what you're going to do in your next two geography lessons. So some of you I know might get into this and want to do it. Um, and if you did do that, then next week's lessons, obviously, you wouldn't have to do as much. But basically, I want to make sure all of you have got a really, really good case study written up on the Holderness Coast. Um, and a lot of you will have done some of this already. So in, a, in the case study, there needs to be a clear description of where the Holderness Coast is located. So you might want to draw my little triangle um, sketch of the UK and then pinpoint where it is you might want to draw the close-up map or stick it in and I know a lot of you have already done that so you don't need to do it again then you need and this is really important to explain the causes of the rapid erosion so you might want to look again at the video I did back before half term um, and some of you would have completed a sheet about the causes which I've reattached this lesson so again um, some of you might have done this already, and I know a lot of you have. Some of you might want to print it. I've noticed a typo there. It says for shoes that struggle. It should say for those that struggle more with writing long paragraphs. So there is a sheet available if you want to. Um, the next section is to describe the effects of rapid erosion. And lots of you will have done this yesterday if you did the Venn diagram, um, the colour coded sheet of the effects or the spider diagram or table. And then the last section is the responses. So explain the different management techniques used along the Holderness coast. So I would maybe complete this as a large A3 table. If I was doing this, I'd probably do it across a whole double page. But some of you might want to print the table um, and just fill it in on the sheet. Some of you might want to print the table, cut bits out and make it into a big page in your book with the advantages and disadvantages okay so I'm going to set aside our lessons for next week for you to write up this case study and make it a really really good case study um, but I will still set the lessons individually and give you some websites for research as well for those of you that get this done massive well done you're doing brilliantly year 10 see you soon